Hello everyone, this is HTS Yeski here back with some more Bronze League Heroes, which I've been having a lot of fun casting. Apparently you guys Husky StarCraft 2. This name resonates with the StarCraft 2 community a lot. Back in the early days of Wings of Liberty, Husky was the most popular YouTuber. In fact, he was one of the most popular YouTubers overall on the website, reaching almost 1 million subscribers. And this is a really huge number if you consider he only casted StarCraft 2. He was probably the number one person in the StarCraft 2 community, way higher than Artosis, Day9 or any other famous personality. So epic, so beautiful, and a great, great game here by Hyperjig. He's stuck through to the end, he's going to be able to take this game, and there's the elimination! Fine is fine, has been eliminated. Hyperjig is your winner with some crazy awesome micro. Mike Lamont first started his casting career in Oregon, which was his home state. A great hype and intonation and voice alongside deep game analysis made him one of the best content creators on StarCraft 2. Husky wasn't just casting pro players matches, he was also doing special videos like Bronze League Heroes and many other different stuff, basically becoming the pioneer of SC2 content. Much akin to what Hearthstone or Lovka do now, Husky was also trying to get as many people into StarCraft 2 as he could. His explanations were always simple, yet very entertaining, and this way he was trying to captivate the attention of people who didn't even know about the game, and as you might guess, he was very successful based on his subscribers count. His channel kept growing rapidly from 2010 till 2015, and at that point Husky should have already been a rather rich person, and StarCraft 2 was still diverse and interesting. People were expecting new expansions soon, and Husky's channel would also gain 1 million subs in a couple of months, which would be the record for any RTS YouTuber. Mike also loved himself longer breaks, and the upload schedule changed a bit to free up some time for himself, and it seemed like a dream career. But suddenly, in 2015, Husky just disappeared. Kill this gateway, and can he do it though? White Rod needs to keep these cells in place. Here comes the run by! Oh, he blocks it off! Just in time! Oh my god, able to block that off. The cannon is gonna finish. This attack is not going to work. This is absolutely crazy right now. GG! Oh! Oh! He left no explanation, neither a video nor a text message. He was just gone. His huge fan base became really worried. Did something bad happen to Husky? Is he on vacation? Was there like a real reason for him to suddenly become inactive? And then the long period of silence begins. People were waiting for almost four years to hear something from him. What they saw next shocked them. This was the Husky they knew. But I don't think that was quite the, the correct word there. So there's the storms! Oh, from the balcony! High Templar is going to eat up a lot of these units. They are just sitting up there drinking martinis. Oh wait, now they're dead, but they went out. No, Pilo just went down! He didn't stand a chance. Oh, sweet Pilo, how we love you so much. And this was the new version of him. Well, we just got this cute little puppy. Her name is Blueberry Muffin and we love her already. We've had her for about a week and she's the cutest. And she Llamas are very quiet and often communicate by humming. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> mm, slat. Angry llamas stick out their tongues and spit. That is true. All of a sudden, Husky appeared out of nowhere with an explanation. He looked like a typical rich YouTuber who does stuff for six-year-old kids. Now residing in LA, Husky was enjoying his new lifestyle blog. But of course, he did give an explanation to what happened. For those of you who don't know, I used to have a gaming channel where I made thousands of videos and I used to travel all over the country live casting esports events for companies such as Major League Gaming and a bunch of others. I was kind of the hype guy and a lot of those events would span over several days between two and four and I would cast probably eight to 12 hours each day for those. So after doing that for several years, one thing that started to catch up with me is I had no official vocal training and my vocal cords actually started to get very damaged and it got so bad that it was to the point where I couldn't finish a single video without Without having to stop and completely try and redo it because my voice would start to hurt it would go out for multiple days at a time and it was just completely unsustainable for me and I was very concerned about this I didn't know what was happening so I checked in with the specialist and they were basically saying if I continue to do 
the workload that I was doing. I would permanently damage my vocal cords. It would completely change my voice. And if it continued to get even worse, it'd be painful just to talk. So long story short, at that point, I took a step back for medical reasons and I started to give myself time to heal. But at that time, I didn't realize how long it would take to kind of get back to normal. So I started focusing my time on helping Rosanna with her channel. We did things like cookbooks. We did a few TV specials. Every single video on her channel I've been involved with in some way. And as someone who's okay with being in front or behind the camera, to me, I was being creative and I was creating things that I love. And on my gaming channel, I never made a goodbye video, this is it video, because I always thought that I would return. And before I knew it, it had been months and even a year since my last video. And the one frustrating thing for me is my vocal cords just were not getting better. And every time I would try and record something and come back, it just wouldn't work. I wouldn't be able to complete it. And my mistake was not updating people as to what was happening. To me, I felt like I was still creating things, but looking back, I realize now that I should have definitely updated people better. I need to be better about communication, and that is something that I will work on moving forward. It didn't sound good if you think about it for a moment. Most of the community was still really upset and even angry for four years silence. Was it possible for him to update the public on his vocal cord issues? It seems like it was a very easy and obvious way to say goodbye or even take a long break from the game. But then his explanation gets even more weird. Why did I delete my gaming channel? Really, it's just part of my creative process. It's how I've lived my life for as long as I can remember. As I move on to the next phases of my life, I tend to just really focus on that. I create something new, I love it, and then I rebuild it as something else. It really is just who I am and how I've always been. I really like to live in the moment and enjoy memories as they're happening. And I totally understand that not everyone will understand that, not everyone will be happy about that, but it's just how I've always been. This was the part that really offended the community the most. It was quite hard to believe for many viewers, and the new Husky also seemed too fake for many people out there. Was it the real reason why? Husky then elaborated that he had also been working with his girlfriend, and actually became her manager. The channel is, by the way, 10 times more successful than Husky's was. And this led to two other theories that the community brought up. The first is, old Husky's videos could tarnish the reputation of a new big brand they were creating with his girlfriend. The second theory, Husky just got tired of StarCraft 2 and focused on the project that just brings way more money. Simple as that. Hello everyone, this is HES Kesky here, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Now, I'm getting better at saying that. Even though Husky returned and tried to reinvent himself, it felt like this. Look at the mask of my boy. Another quote is, it feels like watching you die again and again. Most of the old fanbase were disgusted by his new YouTube videos that appealed more to young kids than to his old followers. Eventually Husky once again went for a break with no new videos for more than a year already. We could say, well, at least he was part of our StarCraft 2 history, but he actually did his best to remove himself from it. We don't have most of his content, but there are still some saved moments here and there of once the best cast of StarCraft 2 had. And even though he doesn't deserve hate for what he did, because it's his life, his choice and his channel, and he didn't really owe anything to anyone, it was still really painful, as if he showed the middle finger to the whole community. Actually, to a million of his viewers and a million invested people is a lot of people. But let's at least hope he does well and now he's happy with what he chose. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this little story, don't forget to subscribe for more. Write your opinion on Husky in the comments. Have a good day, good luck, and have fun.